Hello out there everybody. I wanted to talk about a few things this morning. I hope everybody is uh, doing well. hope everybody is blessed, uh, living and enjoying a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, following Him as best you can. And I just want to offer some words of encouragement this morning, uh, hoping uh, and praying that uh, these videos reach people out there that are hungry for more of the Lord and hungry to hear His Word and hungry to have more of Him, um, more of His ways established in their lives. You and I, as followers of Jesus, need to have a, a strong foundation in our lives, a strong conviction, uh, a strong, uh, strong boundaries around us. We're surrounded today by an ungodly world that is promoting ungodly ideas, uh, different ways that people have decided that society needs to, the direction that society needs to go, and all the different fabrications and um, things that people come up with to try to produce what their opinion is of justice. But I, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in that. And if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you shouldn't either. If it's not found in the Bible, I don't want it. You shouldn't want it either. God's word is to be uh, what we depend on today, what we lean on today, and what, uh, what we use to govern our lives. We, we know we have a government in whatever country that we're in. And they have certain laws and certain things that they um, that they have set in place. But you and I want to have a, a higher law governing us. Uh, and that's the law and the word that comes right out of God's mouth. Right through the mouth of his son Jesus Christ. And then of course through the mouths of the apostles and prophets. We've got the wonderful word of God in front of us. And... And we need to use that to create a protection for ourselves. You need to protect yourself from what's in the world. Um, and the, the setting of scripture I want to just say a few things about is Proverbs 4. And we'll, we'll probably use verses 20 to 27. And the, the subject is going to revolve around uh, the 23rd verse, which says to keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. And what that, what that really means is to guard your heart. The Bible heart is your mind, your thoughts, your attention, your focus, um, what you spend your time meditating on or considering. We need to have a, we need to have a protection or a guard around that. Uh, we have to be careful what we're influenced by. If, if, if you're a, I suspect most people that would ever come across these videos and, and watch, watch them, listen to them, are going to be people who are interested in the Lord uh, and, and following Him and having a life that is surrounded by His Word. Um, but to be... Uh, these kind of people in the kind of world that we live in today when the the culture is really becoming more and more anti-Christian even though uh, the country that I live in the United States is was based uh, on Christianity the the direction of society is going farther and farther away from that so we live in this society and this society wants to direct our the way that we think and the way that we live and the way that we raise our kids, the way that we um, interact socially. They want that to uh, get farther and farther away from the wonderful Christian principles that this this country was founded on. And it was founded on the Word of God. And it was founded on the words that came out of God's dear son's mouth. And uh, before we go to Proverbs 4, I just want to...
touch on John 17. There's a little verse there that I think is a wonderful starting point. Try to say this in all these videos, but don't take don't take anybody's word for uh, as fact, but look up the facts yourself. If I say something, you look up the facts in the Bible yourself. Don't believe everything you hear, and specifically, don't believe everything you hear on media and on TV, on the radio, different programs. Most of the things that are being uh, promoted today, there's a whole lot of unfactual things that are being said and people are swallowing them and accepting them as fact because it's happening publicly. But just because somebody says it doesn't make it true. Do your homework, check into it, don't accept anything until you've proved it to be right or to be a fact. John 17. Um, Jesus praying for the disciples before his departure. He says uh, in the 15th verse, well, let's read 14 too. I have given them, he's, he's talking about his disciples. He's talking to the Father, praying to the Father for his disciples. He says, I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. So even 2,000 years later, you and I are still living in this present world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. So 2,000 years ago, Jesus recognized that there was evil in the world and he was praying for his disciples that God would keep them from being influenced or taken over uh, or persuaded by the evil that's in the world. Well, today there's just as much evil as there was back then. And I will say that today it's, it's so, it seems to be so much more public how much access we have on the internet different ways that we can be reached if you've got a phone a smartphone or if you surf the web there's all sorts of things that are reaching for you and trying to influence the way that you think you need to have a have a protection have a guard over your over your your heart um, we want to have a god taught conscience our conscience is what, and our mind is what the Bible is meaning by the word heart. And that is where, that is what dictates what we're going to do and how we're going to think. And we need to make sure that the things that influence us come from the word of God and they come from the spirit of God. You want to do yourself a favor and surround yourself with godly people. I think that's one of the most essential things to guarding and protecting your heart, protecting your life, protecting your godly convictions, um, is, is, is doing everything you can to surround yourself with God-fearing people. Um, see if you can find, if you don't already have it, find a, 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 a local, godly, God-fearing, Word of God teaching church that uh, you can be a part of so that you can you can be protected you can have a community around you to help protect you uh, and you can be a part of their protection too so in Proverbs 4 and 20 back over here he says my son attend to my words and incline thine ear unto my saying so one of the most important things we can do as believers is attend and pay attention to the word of god do yourself a favor this is part of your protection and and, and guarding yourself is is make sure that you get some of the word of god in you each and every day 
open the scriptures, pray to the pray to the Lord, uh, and ask Him to keep you and, and touch your mind and and keep the Word of God planted in the in the forefront of your mind. We can't help but being around other influences, other people that don't believe in God, that don't live a godly life. You can't help that unless you uh, go off by yourself and seal yourself off. You don't have a phone, you don't have internet, and you just completely shut yourself in. That's probably not the answer either, but um, you're going to be bombarded with uh, ungodly things, so part of your protection and part of uh, what you can do to battle against that is balance it back out. Make sure you open your Bible each and every day. Another key is to make sure that you uh, pray. Pray every day. Pray for God's people. Pray for yourself. Um, pray for your uh, that, the, that the Lord would keep you. Um, I think it's part of the Lord's prayer in, Ma in uh, Matthew 6 where he says, Lead me not into, into temptation but deliver me from evil. So that, that, that's a daily prayer. Um, that's not just exactly what to say when you pray, but that's kind of one of the formulas or the, or the backdrop. So that's the, that's what the kind of thing that we want to include in our prayers. So prayer every day and, um, reading the word of God every day. And then of course, surrounding yourself with, with godly people. Um, because part of the evil that uh, influences us comes from the ungodly world around us. Um, so verse 21, he of course in verse 20 says, incline, incline thine ears unto my sayings. Verse 21, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. So if you hear somebody teach or preach, or if you yourself are reading the word of God, Hold those words and those teachings dear, near and dear to your heart. Pay attention to them. Uh, reflect on them. Where I was raised, we were raised to take notes in church. If you, if, if you go to church, if you attend a church, take notes so you have something to reflect on later. That's part of you guarding and protecting what you have. It shows that, that uh, what you're receiving from the Lord uh, that you you place value on it. it it's very important to you uh, you're paying uh, a, a time and attention to what God is providing for you because God wants to provide for his children he wants us to be equipped to be uh, uh, able to stand in in the kind of days that we're living in Christians need to stand up today stand up for what they believe not back down to different pressures and different things that are coming against us. It's only going to get worse in the in the in the coming years uh, as this cancel culture and uh, these different movements, uh, which are counter and anti-Christian, are coming against the church. Uh, they're gonna they're, the heat's going to come down on the church, and sad to say. A lot of churches are going to cave in to the pressure that comes from the ungodly world. But I'd certainly like to stand with God more than I'd like to stand with the world. If the whole world's against us, it's safer to stand with God. Because after all, he created all of this. And mankind came in to what God created, the perfection that God created. Mankind came in and messed it all up. Made a big mess of it. And we're doing a tremendous job today. Uh, continuing to make that mess even worse. So we want to pay attention to the Word of God. Uh, attend to it. Incline thine ears unto it. Verse 21, Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. So what I see, uh, what I pay attention to, um, what I value, um, Make sure that those things are founded in the Word of God. We want, we want the way that God, we want to live the way that God taught us to live. Verse 23, or verse 22, um, he's speaking, verse 20 to 21, he's speaking about the Word of God and us 
receiving it and valuing it. And then in verse 22, he says, for they are life unto those that find them. Well, he's talking about his word. It's life to you and I. The word of God is our life. It's, it's what we live for. It's what we desire. We're not wanting to be swayed by everything that's around us. But we want the word of God. And we want the people of God. We want to hold up the hands of the leadership that's around us. The Christian leadership. Um, pray, for, pray for your pastors and your leaders. And, and hold their hands up with your prayers. Support them. Like I said, be a part, if you can, of a local church. But the word of God is life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. So uh, the word of God is our spiritual health, uh, the spirit of God. It, it, this is talking about having a healthy uh, nourishment of what God provides to keep you, to protect you. That's why he goes into this 23rd verse and he says, Keep or guard thy heart or thy mind with all diligence. Don't be slack about it. Because all these things that are coming against you on the uh, social media and all these things on the news and these different ideas, they're, they're wanting to get a hold of you and bring you into the, their way of thinking. So you have to guard, uh, guard your mind with all diligence, be careful. I, I would have, personally, I'll say this, for myself, I've got to just turn it off. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want it. I don't want those kind of thoughts in my mind because they're coming from a place of ungodliness. The different ideas, the social uh, ideas that are being promoted, it's ungodly. It's not of God. God has no part of that. It's actually against what God taught different things and I don't want to get into specifics but if you know your Bible you know what I'm talking about for out of your so you have to guard your mind with all diligence for out of your mind are the issues of life our issues come from the way we think we got to we, we have to protect uh, different influences that are wrong from coming in but we also have another way that we need to be protecting ourselves is from the nature that's within. We have a, a nature that we were all born with that, that uh, thank God that we were converted, that hopefully you've received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I say some things about that in some of my other videos, so I don't want to say too much about it today, but you need the Holy Ghost and uh, you need the Spirit of God working in you because there's something that you and I were born with that that. It, it wants to guide us into an ungodly lifestyle. And we can see that in Mark 7. is very, probably one of the most clearest pictures. And this is talking about the nature of the flesh that we were all born with. And that has still continued to be a part of us. Even after we're con converted and we're filled with the Spirit, we're filled with the Spirit so that we can battle against the nature that's still there, that's still trying to influence us. We, we have to fight and battle this each and every day. If it, even if it wasn't, if, if we weren't surrounded by an evil, ungodly world, we've got a nature within that wants to lead us into sin, a sinful, carnal fleshly nature the scriptures talk about all those different uh, terms but uh, ver uh, Mark 7 verse 20 Jesus speaking and he said that which cometh out of the man that defiles the man for from within out of the heart or the mind out of your heart, your mind. If you're a human, you've got one of, one of these natures. I wish we didn't, but we do. From within, out of the heart of men and women, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, or loose moral living. 
loose morals, uh, pr promiscuity, um, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All, look at the 23rd verse. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. So if you take Mark 7 and 23 and you compare it to Proverbs 4 and 23, part of the reason we need to guard our heart is because all these things that I just read come from within and they want to... Uh, these things that are working in our heart that we need to battle against, we need to fight against. The scripture tells us to be renewed uh, in the spirit of our mind. We have to do that every day. That's why we read the word of God. That's why we pray. That's why we surround ourselves with godly people. Listen to godly music. Uh, uh, by doing those things, you're equipping yourself. You're... Uh, so you're wrapping yourself with armor, uh, with a sword, with a helmet, uh, with a breastplate. You see those different items in Ephesians 6. Um, back in Proverbs 4 and verse 24, uh, one scripture I did also want to mention was... Um, Uh, Romans 12 and verse 2. I could maybe quote it, but it, sometimes it's best to read it. Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So those things I just mentioned... That's how you renew your mind. You don't want to be conformed to this world because this world in its present condition, as long as they continue to reject God, this world around us is not going to survive. It's going to end up imploding and destroying itself. But he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So we want to be renewed in the way that we think. Um, there's all these things, the evil from the world and the evil from our own nature is wanting to lead us in the wrong direction. So guard your heart. Be diligent about it. Uh, Proverbs 4.24 Put away from thee the froward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. So make a, make a commitment with yourself that I'm not going to say anything out of my mouth. I'm not going to let can't remember what scripture it is but don't let any corrupt communication come out of your mouth don't say evil things don't talk about people um, don't say negative things uh, be careful how you speak be be positive don't talk to yourself negatively don't be down on yourself and hard on yourself you want to you want to be careful and examine uh, yourself but you don't want to be overly critical because that's almost self-defeating so put away from thee the per perverse lips put it far from thee let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee so um, you want to be looking uh, forward what's in front of you you can't do anything about yesterday you can't do anything about the things, the mistakes that you've made, but you want to look right on. What is in front of me? God's not always that interested in, in what you've done past tense. He wants to know, what are you going to do now? What, are, what steps are you going to take now to, uh, to look straight before thee? Paul, Paul, the apostle, said, I believe it's in Philippians 3, he said, um, why can't I quote that? That's terrible. This is a very common scripture from where I come from. I don't know why my quoter is not going to be able to. 
repeat it. Uh, Proverbs 3 and 13. Paul said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. You can't do anything about what you've already done. You can't do anything about the time you've wasted. You can't do anything about the influences that you've allowed to come into your life and probably harm you. Uh, you can't do anything about that. But forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, what are you going to do now? Are you, are you going to be diligent about guarding your heart? I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. And I don't want to get into specifically what that's talking about, but uh, pressing forward into a closer walk with the Lord. I, I That's what it means when it says, let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Uh, verse 26, ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. I'm back in Proverbs 4, 25 and 26. So ponder the path of thy feet. Um, your life and your lifestyle and what you do is, is summed up by the decisions that you make. Consider. Be careful of the decisions you make. Be careful the kind of people that you have around you um ponder the path of thy feet how is what i'm doing going to help me to grow in god how is this decision or this person consider don't just uh don't just allow uh different things to just happen to you but create a, a safe boundary a boundary line around you that's part of what it means to guard your heart create a boundary within i'm not going to accept certain things i'm not going to let them come in and be a part of me i'm not going to let the things that are being said and taught and pushed and forced in some cases on this world i'm creating a fence line that fence line is god's word god's people i'm creating a boundary around my life where none of that garbage is coming in this not you can't this can't come into my house joshua in the i think it's the 24th chapter he said as for me and my house we're gonna serve the lord we're going the way that the lord is going so all this has to do with pondering the path of your feet uh protecting yourself um turn not to the right hand nor to the left this is verse 27 uh remove thy foot from evil so don't 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 get distracted. Don't get turned aside from this this straightforward you looking to the Lord for your direction. Don't turn don't get distracted. Don't turn to the right or to the left. If you know something is wrong, it says remove thy foot from evil. If you know something is wrong and not pleasing to the Lord, avoid it. Run from it. Uh, guard your heart. Pr protect yourself from making wrong decisions and having to reap uh, the consequences for those things. This is how you guard and protect yourself. Um, you keep yourself uh, safe uh, and be diligent about it. Keep yourself safe from the evil that's in the world and the evil that comes from your own nature. It's just a couple words I wanted to uh, put out here this morning. Uh, I hope I hope it did something for you. I hope it uh, I hope these words uh, minister to you. Um, and I I would just like to encourage everyone out there to to protect yourself. Uh, to be careful. Don't be don't be persuaded by the different things. No matter how many people are saying them. No matter how many people are promoting these different ideas. If it's not of God, avoid it like the plague. Avoid it. Run from it. <laughs> you know, uh, don't don't allow it to come in. So, I, I want to stop right there. Um, 
it's good to have safe boundaries around your life. Uh, I'm gonna continue to put these videos out there. Um, if you like them, uh, subscribe. Uh, maybe even throw some comments in there if you have anything that you have on your mind. But God bless you, and I hope uh, I hope uh, you're continuing to follow the Lord and continuing to. Uh, Feast on his word and allowing his word to change the way that you think and allowing the, the presence of the Lord to be more permanent in your life and living a life that is pleasing to him. There is no greater joy and no greater peace that comes from living a life that's pleasing to the, to the Lord. If you have a conscience that's been exercised to be sensitive to his presence, uh, to entertain his presence in your life. You can feel when he's pleased or displeased. There's no greater joy and no greater peace in life than knowing you're right with your creator and with, and with his people. So God bless you. Um, stay safe out there.